Debugging is kind of an art form for Christian, he told me, and um, I'm very curious what he's going to tell us about how to debug NEOS. Please welcome on stage Christian Müller. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, indeed. Um, I think debugging is kind of an art form. You can just fiddle around and at some point either give up or fix it. That works. But I mean, there are more sensible ways to go about and, and fix bugs. And I actually like the challenge. Um, as much as I hate jigsaw puzzles, I, I love this kind of puzzle where you have like, it's like a crime, crime puzzle, right? You have like a death site, and then you, f you need to figure out who, who killed it, and what killed it, and with what. So um, let's, let's jump right in. Uh, I have prepared this wonderful demo page that no one have, uh, has ever seen before. Um, ve vastly changed the content with a link to my slides. And oops. <sighs> Too bad, right? I mean, wh what happened here? Um, I guess let's have a look, right? I mean, that's what we are here for. So um, don't don't read all this all the shit there. Don't don't read it. Don't read it. Just follow follow me. Um, so what we see is something something PHP warning startup blah. So okay, we know it's something about PHP, right? It's it's nothing about Flow or Neos. It's it's a PHP problem in a way. And we also have an interesting thing here. If you see something about a subprocess exception, you know it is something that happened in our proxy building subprocess. I will talk about that later a bit more. But um, suffice to say, this is a, a special case of request that happens on the command line. So we know something is wrong with the command line PHP. And there's actually another important bit probably the most important, this one, which says, Flow requires PHP version 7.10 or higher, but your installed version is 7.0.31. So, well, obviously, my command line has the wrong PHP version. Uh, that is something we can fix, hopefully. Um, let's see. What I did is uh, I fiddled around with PHP and, and Flow to get a feeling of what works and what doesn't work with uh, old PHP versions. And so I entered this uh, wonderful path for a alternative PHP binary for the command line and only for the command line uh, to test how that works. And obviously, it doesn't. So uh, let's remove this. And let's see what happens. Nothing. That's bad. Uh, you know what the problem is? There's a cache, and this is such low-level setting that uh, the cache cannot even be flushed anymore because it's just broken at that point. Uh, so whenever you have this kind of low-level error, you, you definitely want to flush the cache after changing something to be sure uh, that happens. Uh, ignore what I do. This is an alias for just removing temporary. Um, as, as an experienced debugger, you, you generate this kind of tooling for yourself to, to make it easier. Um, and here we go. Obviously, we now need to rebuild all the caches. Takes a bit. There we go. Well, not really. Uh, but you see uh, presentation slides. That looks good. The page is there generally, but it's, it's not there, kind of. I mean, something is wrong. Um, so obviously, you have no clue what I did, so you can't tell me what is wrong here. Um, what I did is I created a little controller that shows my slides just to make it more complicated and get more bugs on screen. Um, and this controller has its own route. There you go. Debugging Neo's presentation slides is uh, the controller. This looks all good. Uh, unless someone has a complaint from uh, the audience, this should be a pretty good uh, route configuration for my presentation slides UAE, which, as you saw, maybe in the browser is the UAE that is currently active. So it should work, but it doesn't. And uh, there is a little, a little tip for this kind of error. So if you have this problem, you can just run the um, flow, flow routing list. 
uh, command, which will list all uh, registered routes currently in the right order. And um, well, let's resize this a bit. And if you scroll through here, just have a look here, because those are the packages the, the routes come from. You see NeoSeo, NeoS, 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 NeoS UI, NeoS Media, NeoS Media Browser. There is no NeoS Demo in there. So the route somehow is not registered. Not registered. And that is the next important point. You can have the most wonderful route configuration for your controller, but you need to register it, which I uh, accidentally forgot to do. Uh, so let's grab this uh, little piece of code that I prepared, just because I thought we might need it at some point, and put it here. Actually fix the indentation. Ah, you see, copying code never works, never works. Great. Look. Is that right? Probably not, no? Ah, right. Nah. Thanks. What? Flow is wrong? No, flow is right. Flow is almost right. <laughs> right, so we are one step further to getting our slides. Um, so just for those of you who haven't seen route configuration, um, I register a package, in this case, NES demo. Um, and this is actually wrong. Um, should be like this. Uh, no, it's fine. Um, and I need to, to load my routes before the NEOS routes, because otherwise uh, those will take precedence and um, actually result in a 404 again, because there is no page that is called presentation slides. So uh, that's important as well. But let's look at our next wonderful error. Uh, could not authenticate any token. Huh. Token, authenticate, security, obviously, somehow. Might be a security problem. And it actually tells me, OK, uh, we have no credentials or authentication. That's true. I didn't log in any anywhere. And there is this NEOS NEOS all controller actions has abstained and therefore denied me access. Too bad. Uh, the problem is that in a NEOS environment, all controller actions automatically get, uh, get protected by this NEOS NEOS all controllers action. Uh, so in order to reach a controller without being logged in, uh, you actually need to grant access to it. So we have to do that, which I also conveniently forgot to do before the slide, uh, this presentation. So we have our policy YAML. And I need to add a privilege target. I prepared that as well. Let's see how well that copies over. Ah. I cannot mouse pad. That looks good. And obviously, we want to grant it to everybody. So privilege. Target, uh, what did I tell it, Neos. Nah. OK, this, this case was not a good idea for the size, because it's actually not, not enough presentation access. And I want to grant permission. So if we did everything right, we, we finally have something. Yeah, and I, I felt after this, this kind of hard work of debugging like three bucks in a row, right, we, we earned some, some nice uh, cat content, right? Um, so, yeah, um, this doesn't work great, as always. Uh, debugging Neos, that's the talk, and we are right in the middle of it. Um, I We'll come back to practical things, but obviously uh, debugging in a sensible way means that you need to have an understanding of the system you are trying to debug. Um, in many cases, if you are working on a project and you have a bug, um, you might have done something in the minute before that 
created the bug. So that is the most easiest thing to debug because you at least know how to fix it. Even if you want to have the code you added, you know how to revert back to a working state. So that's pretty nice. But let's say in a bigger project, you might have accidentally broken something in parts of the code that you didn't visit after doing the change. So you might end up having a bug a bit later, so you have no idea what happened and where it's coming from. And this is a situation where you need um, a bit of background, a bit of understanding of the whole system, and um, a defined way to go into a debugging session. So, And that's what I want to talk about, because um, my personal process, I often debug actual Neos bugs, which is a bit different again, but still uh, applies very well because you, you have simply no clue. I mean, that it could be broken code from last week. It could be broken code from 10 years ago. It could be just the specific thing I did that broke it, and you never know. So um, first of all, understand the error. Like, really read the message. It's, it's like read the fucking manual. It's read the, f the fucking message. Because we try to give you error messages that work. It's not always the case. You have, in a complex system like Neos, you have a lot of layers. And sometimes you, you, you kind of know in the code at this point, hmm, there will be an error if that happens, but I cannot, cannot do anything here. It will happen somewhere later then. Uh, and then the error message doesn't exactly match what happened. That, that can, these kind of, of situations exist, but in general, we try to provide you with sensible error messages. So read the error message. It's really, really the main point. And um, then get as many details about the error that, mm, as you can, like in which, which times, uh, how does it happen, what, what needs to happen so that the bug appears, uh, what did you do, um, is it a specific request, specific arguments, whatever? Uh, get get all that down. Ideally, have at this point already a defined way to um, recreate the bug. Like um, on every single time, if you know I need to do these th three steps and the bug appears, you're golden because then you can actually go into debugging um, in a, in a good way. Otherwise, if you have random bugs and you d you still don't know why it uh, why it happens, it's it's pretty hard to debug. Um, and these two are something I want to talk about in this talk. Um, I will talk about the rest as well, but this is, this is the main thing for me. If you have this, if you understand the errors, if you understand how, where in the system they happen, and if you, if you know how to get more information about them, you're, you're like 70% there to fix it, because then you have all the information. Um, then that is how I do it. If I have all the information, I try to formulate some theory uh, about what caused this error. Um, some, sensible, some sensible idea of, yeah, okay, if you know, this arguments create the error, so this probably goes there, and then it's transformed like this, and then, yeah, okay, that is wrong, that cannot work. And then the next step is obviously uh, test the theory. That's, that's how I work in debugging. Formulate a theory based on the, on the information I have, try it. If it works, great, you are done, fixed. If it doesn't work, repeat the stuff. Uh, try to get more information if you can. Uh, try a different theory until you're done. And, well, to understand the error, not only reading the error is important, but uh, looking at the stack trace that we also provide is pretty good um, because it gives you a feeling of um, where in the system the error happened, actually. Um, so is, is it... Is it like a high-level error, something security-wise, or is it really low-level, like the PHP thing? And for this, um, I personally know a lot of the code of Flow and Neos, so I, I have an educated guess what, what happens where. Uh, but I feel it's important to understand the layers of the system, at least a bit, to get a good feeling of where your error might come from, uh, because that narrows the field where you have to look for, for solutions. Um, so the, I, you can split Neos and Flow in many different ways and many different layers. I did this because it's, I think, for debugging, for someone not too intimate with the code, um, a good abstraction between different layers, because you will mostly work in the, in the bottom two layers, controllers and views. Um, but you will sometimes happen, uh, have errors happen that actually 
happen in the, in the other two layers because you did something. Um, so let's have a look. Um, this is actually the core booting, all of it, even though the request handler is pretty, uh, pretty big in the middle. Um, the trick is we first obviously need to, to have class loading running. Without class loading, we cannot do anything. Uh, if something fails in that area, that's pretty bad. I mean, that, that's, that's really a problem. If you have errors in that area, you might have configured your composer JSON wrong, your class loading is, is somehow screwed. Um, you look at your composer JSONs, look at the class maps, uh, look at what composer um, autoload dump generates and, and get a feel if, if something's wrong there. Um, then we start the signal slot because obviously we need all the uh, signal slots going on between packages um, to, to get the system running. Uh, then we start the packages, so we need, we need to know which packages are there, what do they want, all that. Uh, it's also pretty early. And after we have all that, we can um, actually decide which request handler is, impor or is important for the current request. That usually boils down these days to it's a command line request or it's a web request. That's more or less the two choices you have. Um, but the request handler is then uh, responsible for booting the rest of the system. So the, um, let's call it higher level, not from your perspective, but from like the core perspective, higher level functions of the framework. So it starts by creating or le reading the configuration. That's an important part because many things can go wrong there. Uh, configuration is cached, so if the cache is broken, uh, you will have a problem, and it will probably not resolve automatically if you don't clear the cache. So uh, if you change something in this area, you definitely always need to clear the cache. Um, you can have just the wrong configuration. All that happens in this layer. Uh, then we start the logging, so that's another thing. We will talk about logging after this, but uh, if something happens before the logging is started, obviously you won't have much in the logs about it. So that's another indicator, so you know what's going on where. Uh, then we start the actual error handling, so the high-level error handling about um, throwing exceptions and stuff like that. Um, then the caching is started, so you see everything before will not be influenced by caching. If you, if you change something, you need to flush the caches manually. And then we, we actually build the proxy classes and load them. So a lot of things can go wrong there, even with your configuration, because it's all influenced by your, by your stuff, by your configuration, by your objects YAML, by your settings YAML. So um, make sure that you, that you have a rough idea what happens there. And, and if you see the, the references to this in the stack trace, um, to, you have a feeling what, what's going on and where to look. Because mm, let's, let's be honest, obviously there are bugs in NEOS, and they happen. But many cases, if you encounter a bug, it's probably something you did in your project. So uh, it might be some configuration or something if it happens here. So then you go to the request handler again. Now the request handler is actually in, in charge of doing something, and it will start the HTTP stack. I will not go in detail in that. Uh, many things happen there, routing, all that. So if you have errors in that, it's all happening in here. But for you, it's just one thing, and it will usually also be configuration. Unless you added something to the HTTP stack, then it might be your component. But usually, you will see in the error message that it is your component that is doing the oopsie. So um, go in and fix it. Uh, from the HTTP stack, at some point, we end up in the controller. And this is more or less user land now. Obviously, NEOS has its own controller, so it's still not user land if you are just talking about the NEOS project. Um, but if you have an application or a plugin or whatever, you will be there at some point. And um, if your stack trace shows your controller somewhere in, in the stack trace, you know it's, it's my code. I need to fix it. Um, Right, and the controller will actually also do a, a couple of things before it actually hands over to the view. Uh, property mapping will happen, uh, so your incoming arguments will be mapped to something more sensible high level, so you want to look at that. Um, action security happens, as we saw. Um, that happens before the actual action is triggered, so also that is something uh, you need to be aware of. Uh, in between, uh, validation happens. I mash that up into property mapping. It's bad, but should be a separate point. Um, and then the actual action is triggered. So this is really your code, which will then start the view. And I will come back to view 
uh, later, because that's a separate thing, because we talk about Fusion. Uh, but let's go on to logging, uh, because that's the next step. Now you have a rough idea about the structure of, of Flow and Neos. I will obviously uh, make the slides available so you can look it up. Um, but after understanding the error and understanding where roughly it happens, you now want to gather all the information you can. And for that, you want to look at logs. So we have system log, which is kind of our general log. Um, most things that are logged happen in the system log. Um, the entries will look something like this. Uh, so you have a timestamp, you have a process ID, that's important because you can, you can see which entries belong to the same process. Um, so if you see an error entry, you know what else happened in the same request. Um, you have the error level, obviously, uh, a package potentially, and some message, whatever it is. So um, just for the structure. And um, let's look at a few things that happened during the errors we had earlier. Um, router route, no route match the route part. Um, and I inserted some, uh, some variable parts, so you will have a specific string there, some route part that you tried to access that was not accessible. But um, try to read those messages uh, with those placeholders in your mind so you know what is dynamic and what is, what is actually happening there. Um, so yeah, something, some route was not matching. Uh, then we have something like this. This is also pretty important to, to, to know, because uh, as you saw in the command uh, for the route list, uh, the routes are stringed together, so you can have a top-level route, a sub-route, sub-sub-route, and they're stringed together with a double colon. So um, if you see something like this, it means um, this specific sub-sub-sub-route finally matched uh, your request. Um, which also means you cannot search for this string as a whole in your configuration, but you have to search for this string and then tie it together manually in your route configuration. And then finally, something like this, exception code, inline number of something, see also hash text. This is pretty important because, first of all, our codes are unique. So if you have an exception code and want to look up what happens at this point in the code, uh, you can search for that code, and you will find exactly one point where an exception is thrown with that code. Um, and then you have this hash text uh, that ends up in uh, data logs exceptions, uh, hash text, and it contains the full stack trace that you also ideally saw in your browser, but if you want to revisit it later because you didn't actually have time or whatever, you want to revisit older ones, uh, they are in that folder. Then we have the security log, which additionally has the IP addresses logged, so you can also match them to requests. And the security log has entries like this, session, some session ID, contains auth token for some class name, uh, for uh, some defined configured authentication provider, so the class name is kind of general, so you can have three authentication providers with different names, but the same class. And uh, it says status, no credentials given. That can also be, needs to be re-authenticated or is authenticated. So it gives you a hint, uh, okay, that I have this authentication provider and it says no credentials given. So obviously my login form seems to not arrive at uh, the right place. Uh, decided, granted, on privilege, privilege name, uh, pretty obvious, okay, that worked, something, something was granted, it can also be denied, abstain, whatever. Um, also gives you a good hint of uh, which privileges matched at all, because they will, will appear there, and uh, what was the decision of the security framework for this. And finally, successfully re-authenticated tokens for account username. So yeah, okay, there was some, some session uh, previously and it was re-authenticated on this request because the browser sent the right cookie or whatever, but usually cookie. Um, so this is also important to uh, connect to your debugging if, if you're dealing with security important stuff like uh, authentication. Um, you, you want to have this information as well because it gives you good hints about uh, what actually goes wrong. PHP logs, uh, last line of defense before our logs are, are started and for fatal errors in PHP, you obviously want to have access to your PHP logs. However, you do that up to your system configuration. Um, in Apache mod PHP, it can end up in the Apache error log. Uh, be aware of that. Um, but be aware where your PHP errors end up uh, in and please don't 
disable the PHP log and also disable error view, uh, display errors because then you never see any PHP errors and that's just bad. You get the, the classical white page. You don't want to have that. Um, Right, that's typical fatal error, uncaught cause, something, something, method on null. So if you forgot to, uh, to inject something that you try to access, that is typically what you see. Uh, uncaught, NEARS flow, error exception, warning, require file can happen if the file is not there. Um, type error, also pretty typical. Uh, you provided some other type, uh, but it should be type this. Um, also something to look at. So. Short example for something else, because now we go one step higher. We go into the view direction. Um, and we have this wonderful demo page that you all know. And you will notice there's something missing there. There should be a chapter list in the demo side, which is not there. So what happened? Well, what happened is I linked to the production environment, so this is production context, and in production context, uh, Fusion will not show you any error messages, but it will just uh, hide the element that created the error. Uh, although you can still know what happened because in the actual source code of the page, you will see the error. So I have prepared that. This is the source code of this page, and you will see here um, a comment saying exception while rendering, blah, 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 blah. This is a very long string uh, containing the uh, fusion path and the fusion objects. And generally, you just want to look at the end, um, at like what fusion type is, is broken there. And you see here method foo is not call callable untrusted context. That's the error ID. And what happened is I just added some foo method call in an eel expression in that, in that element. But this is, I mean, it's a pretty simple error. You could have a, a typo in your, in your expression, and this kind of thing happens. Just be aware that production context hides stuff from you sometimes. So um, in, uh, in development, you would actually see this exception printed out. Uh, right. So after this wonderful example, you get a cat again. I think that's just fair. Um, Let's move on to tools, because time is running short. So this is uh, still pretty important, although the video is longer than actually we have time. Um, this is the main tool that you should get uh, acquainted with. Uh, it's it's xdebug, so anything you debug in PHP, you will want to have an idea how xdebug works. Um, so what I'm doing here, this is, this is the, um, the Flickr plugin in the demo side. And I noticed something is not working there. You just get an error message, this please specify uh, flick attacks. And so I wanted to look into this. Um, I added an xdebug breakpoint at this, uh, this place, uh, started the debugger. So it's now ready to get a connection. Um, and then we go to the page, um, say, yeah, I want to debug this. And um, it takes a while to create the connection. Um, so it will start loading. You see it's still loading. And now we have the connection. And um, in the debugger, you can actually see where are you. And you can, you can inspect all the variables at the current scope. So that's, that's already super valuable to debug, um, having all this information there. Um, you also have a call stack. Um, and um, if you go down, we see, OK, it's looking at request internal arguments. So let's look at request. And uh, argument seems kind of empty. So that's probably the problem we have. Um, we can also see the globals and everything. Uh, it's really nice to inspect. And you can go back and see um, the variables in, in all the other frames there. Um, so that's super, super neat to, to debug um, in detail. Um, in this case, this is just an example. I didn't actually go through and, and fix the bug, because I think the bug is actually that there's just no tags configured for this. It's, it's not actually uh, broken code-wise. Um, and we end up with um, being able to step through this. Um, if you ever did a JavaScript debugging, you have the same, the same things as there. You can step through uh, each line of code and then inspect it again and again. Um, so it's, it's super neat to figure out what's going on. Um, I'm actually just jumping up here, so we will skip that for getting more content. I think that's better. So 
Uh, Xdebug is great, but there's some gotchas for Xdebug. Um, actually, one of them is that Flow operates with proxy classes, as I said, and as you probably know. Um, that's why I use the Xdebug statement in the code. Uh, if I used the PHP Storm uh, breakpoint feature, it wouldn't have worked because um, the breakpoint was in the wrong position because we created the proxy class in a different place, and that is where the breakpoint should be. But I don't easily access the proxy classes, so it doesn't work. Um, Xdebug statement works pretty well. That's just fine. Uh, if you want to have the full thing and want to have the red dot and the breakpoint thing, um, there is a debug proxy um, that is a Go tool that you can install and run in parallel that will map the correct classes to the correct places, and then everything works as you want to usually. So, yeah. Uh, Wadamp obviously works. We have our flow Wadamp and just Wadamp. Um, I tend to use Wadamp more than flow Wadamp just because it gives you more details most of the time. Um, but just be aware, use whatever you feel comfortable with if you need a Wadamp. Um, a Wadamper, uh, this package, um, something to look at. It's pretty interesting. Um, Symfony build it. Um, you can actually use a Wadamp statement in your code and it Wadamps to a console window. So that's pretty neat. It didn't always work for me, though, so I'm not sure. And then the classic die always works. It's wonderful. Um, I love it. Um, it's, it's pretty good if you have deeply nested uh, code. It's also some place where Xdebug is not great if you need to step through a million steps to get to the place where you want. It's not helpful. Die will die at the place you put it, so it's nice. Uh, just output everything you need before and die. It's not something I recommend to really do often, but if you know what you're doing, it can be a super quick tool to get you the right information. Um, so let's quickly look at the view. Fluid, I would just skip that because it's not important, but Fusion is much, much more important. Let's go practical again. Oh, you got the cat before the practical. Damn it. OK, um, there are two ways you can use NIST Fusion Debug. That's exactly what it says. It will output, de uh, output debug, um, debug statements for you. So if I do this, um, you can actually have the same as a flow var dump, uh, but rendered by Fusion. It's pretty neat because you can inspect Fusion variables and yield expression results. Um, so use this whenever you, you are unsure what a vari variable contains. Um, code examples are here. I will publish them later. And then you have value, which is just, just a simple value. But for some things, it's easier because it doesn't break the page flow. So I like to use it in simple cases because I can just um, output something in the rest of the page. Um, so the cat, OK. And um, there are some useful packages for, for looking at fusion um, debugging. The eel shell, uh, which allows you to um, do eel expressions on the command line. It's pretty neat. And also NEOS debug, uh, which is a general uh, NEOS debug toolbar, uh, which also gives you inspections for caching uh, of uh, Fusion. So that's pretty helpful. Uh, general gotchas for Fusion is always caching. Look at your caching, caching, caching. It will probably be broken. So uh, have a look. Make it easier. And the second thing I can recommend for Fusion debugging, uh, if you really don't know what's happening, uh, make it simpler. Reduce your code, right? Uh, reduce your page, uh, remove the header, remove the footer. Um, as, as soon as you notice, oh, the, the error is gone, you know the last thing I did disabled is the part where the error is in, and then dive in. And so last things, uh, keep in mind you have, uh, for some errors, you have two ways to, to read them and two ways to understand them. Uh, you always need to keep that in mind and, and try to understand both ways. Uh, git bisect super tool, if you use git, uh, it actually allows you to say, OK, 10 commits from, from here, it was fine, but I don't know which of the 10 commands broke it. So it goes in and splits the commits in half, gives you both halves. You can try them. If one of them works, you can say, OK, this works. Uh, so it's the bottom half that is not working. It splits it again and again. And then at the end, you have one commit that actually broke the, the build. So uh, you're there. You, you know what you need to debug. Um, that's it. Um, questions, you can ask me, my email address. Uh, I'm here tomorrow. Just ask me if you have any questions, any details. Thank you. And a last kitten for you.
Thank you very much.